Burney, as he was known, was born on June 7, 1914, in Elizabeth, New Jersey, to Joseph B. Egan and Mary Teresa Monahan. The youngest of nine children, Bernie studied pre-law at New York's Fordham University, but began his career in the citrus industry in 1935, transporting fruit at Refrigerated Steamship Line, a subsidiary of United Fruit Company. After his father died of a heart attack in 1936, he and his four brothers took over the family produce sales and distribution business, Egan Fickett and Company, which his father had founded in 1914, and a Florida fresh citrus packing house too. It was due to that packing house that their father had pioneered an innovative method of citrus marketing, selling Indian River citrus direct to his largest customers rather than at auction. J.B. Egan held the belief that the only way to build a successful business is through consistent quality. The brothers followed in his footsteps, and Bernie adhered to his father's business philosophy for the rest of his life. In 1962, Bernie became the sole stockholder and moved the headquarters to Wabasso, Florida in 1968 because it was handy to a lot of the packing houses he dealt with and formed DNE Sales Incorporated, now DNE World Fruit Sales, as the company's marketing arm. Originally just a small sales office with him and his bookkeeper, DNE stood for the packing houses of Deerfield, Nevins, and Egan. Under his leadership, it became the largest marketing agent of fresh Florida citrus in the country, selling for numerous packing houses throughout the state, while Bernard Egan and Company grew to over 12 divisions and more than 500 employees. I think one of the special things about Pop was that he always had a lot of enthusiasm, and I think a lot of that uh, um, came from his upbringing. He grew up in the Depression, and he always told me that he saw a lot of people in the Depression who lost their fortune and, and they fell apart. And then he saw other people who lost their fortune and said, you know, I'm just going to try harder and it's a good chance to start over. And so he always had this attitude that um, it's going to turn out okay. He was a great ambassador for the Indian River area and was so enthusiastic about his product that when he started selling fruit in Italy, he took Berlitz courses on Italian. While in Wabasso, Bernie went to lunch in Vero Beach at the Riviera and met the young hostess there, Elizabeth Seltzer. He kept going back for lunch. Three years later, in 1971, they married. Together, they had 11 children and 17 grandchildren. I'd get a, a daily phone call from Bernie, and he was, he was a great Irishman. And, and uh, he would always start out our conversation with, top of the morning to you, and, uh, to which I had to reply in the rest of the day to you, sir. He was a visionary, and he, he thought globally where a lot of other people were thinking, you know, just domestically. In 1972, Bernie moved the office to Fort Pierce to accommodate his increasing export business. He continued to expand the European markets for fresh Florida citrus and pioneered the development of the export markets to Japan after receiving a request from a Japanese businessman from Sumitomo who stopped by his office one day. His commitment to a high quality product and good customer relations efforts paid off as he soon became the largest exporter of fresh Indian River grapefruit to Japan. When you talk about exports, we always teased Bernie and, and teased our, among ourselves, called him the godfather of grapefruit. When Bernie traveled around the world and even in the United States, he was a great spokesman for grapefruit. In 1978, DNE was awarded the prestigious President's E Certificate for Exports for an outstanding contribution to the United States Export Expansion Program. And in 1988, Bernard Egan and Company was a special honoree in the Florida Department of Commerce Industry Appreciation Program. His promotion and marketing of the quality and flavor of the Indian River area was legendary, even earning him hero status in Japan when his business acumen was honored with his own comic book story. A unique tool the Japanese used to teach young professionals about business from successful stories of international trade. The storyline shows Bernie racing through his groves in his big Mercedes. True and being so conscious of taking good care of his fruit that he jumps in the water to save a piece that falls off the boat. Not true, although he definitely was a fanatic when it came to quality, care, and handling of his citrus. Due to that unwavering commitment to quality and service, Bernie felt the only way to be able to deliver on his promise to provide the highest quality available was in owning the groves, the packing houses, shipping companies, and sales entity that marketed his fruit. And that's what he did. One of the first to use automated labeling on fruit, he even bought that company, realizing the future marketing potential of branding his product. 
Bernie owned groves in Indian River, Martin, St. Lucie, Hendry, Brevard, and Okeechobee counties, and was involved in all facets of the fresh fruit industry, serving on the boards of numerous industry organizations, including the Produce Marketing Association, United Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Association, Florida Citrus Packers, Gulf CGA, Florida Citrus Mutual, and Florida Fruit and Vegetable Association. In 1978, he was president of the United Growers and Shippers Association in Orlando and was appointed to the Florida Citrus Commission in 1987, where he served until 1990, while at the same time serving as director, chairman, and president of the Indian River Citrus League. Always on the go, his travels to and from Lakeland to attend commission meetings were the source of many gray hairs for those who accompanied him. When we had to go meetings in the center of the part of the state and we'd ride with him, and a lot of people had airplanes in the 80s and would fly over to the center part of the state. But if, you, if you're in a real hurry, you took Air Egan, which was Bernie always loved cars, had a not big Mercedes or a big Lexus, and, and they, I mean, he'd go out 60 pegged out. As his sales grew, so did the need for more markets, which led Bernie around the world promoting Indian River grapefruit, expanding into even more markets, and establishing DNE as one of the world's largest citrus import-export firms. Prior to the 2004 hurricanes, DNE exported over 4 million cartons to 20 different countries. In 1990, this earned him the John T. Leslie Award of Excellence from the Florida Citrus Packers for his outstanding contributions to the fresh citrus industry and, in 1993, earned DNE the President's E-Star Award for Exports for continued outstanding contributions to the U.S. Export Expansion Program. In 1997, the company entered into a strategic marketing alliance with Ocean Spray on fresh citrus, becoming the exclusive distributor of fresh citrus under the Ocean Spray brand and continuing to grow the brand with the promotion of bottled grapefruit juices. In 2002, he was inducted into the Florida Agriculture Hall of Fame and was recognized in 2009 with the Legends of the River Award for his commitment and leadership in the protection and enhancement of the Indian River production area. Known fondly as the godfather of grapefruit for his soft-spoken but gruff demeanor, Bernie had a heart of gold and made it a point to know about the people he dealt with on a daily basis. Whether it was an employee, a friend, or a business associate, Bernie knew the names of their family members and what was going on in their lives. When my father died, the very first phone call before my family, before friends that I, I play golf with or, or you know, go hunting with, he was the first phone call, and, and uh, as busy as he is, he wanted to be sure I was okay, and if there was anything I needed to call on him. I mean, it, it just spoke volumes of, of what he was all about. He cared and contributed not only to the citrus industry, but to the many philanthropic organizations with which he was involved, including a homeless shelter in Vero Beach, the Samaritan Center, of which he was a founding co-chair. Bernie always said he wanted to make it to the age of 90, and true to form, he did what he said he was going to do. So on June 7, 2004, he proudly proclaimed, I made it, and then peacefully died in his sleep the next morning. His strength of character, foresight, and devotion to the industry was legendary, and his pioneering efforts in developing new markets in both Europe and the Far East led him to become one of the largest marketers of fresh citrus in the United States. As Ben Bailey said, men like Bernard Egan don't come around very often. He has the lasting legacy of being a man that we can all aspire to be like. It just doesn't get much better than that. Therefore, we are honored to induct Bernard A. Egan as our 160th member into the Florida Citrus Hall of Fame. <laughs>